Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Here, the Alliance of Civilizations, a UN initiative tasked with promoting peace and tolerance worldwide, held its third annual forum. Over 2,000 participants, including heads of state and members of civil society, met to discuss new ways to build trust and understanding across cultures. Over 140 youth leaders from 60 countries came together to attend the forum, participate, learn, and more importantly, be heard. This third real forum of Alliance of Civilization was a great experience. Mohammed Shahzad is a young human rights activist from Pakistan. The young people, they have very concrete solutions to the problems, uh, but they only need the platform. And uh, I think the Rio Forum was a platform for them. These youth attendees have been actively involved in grassroots efforts to combat discrimination in their home countries. And many have been personally affected by cultural and religious intolerance like Nela Sladojevic from Bosnia. I was born in a country which name is Yugoslavia. We were all diverse and we, were, we had a nice life. And then in one, in one night everything was changed and people started to kill their, their neighbors. Or Eme Sindayigaya from Rwanda. Uh, what happened in Rwanda in 1994, the genocide. Uh, I saw uh, things, by that time I was 16, uh, but I saw basically uh, People lying in the street dead. Uh, I was even threatened to be killed, you know, because uh, they thought I was uh, Tutsi. The day before the forum's official opening, they went on a guided tour of Rio's most culturally and religiously diverse neighborhood, the commercial district of Saara. The youth were greeted by the former president of Portugal and high representative for the Alliance of Civilizations, Mr. Jorge Sampaio. It's important to show that by really cross fertilization of habits, of uh, cultures, of dynamics, one is going across what is necessary to improve understanding. We belong all to the same world and we have to live together. The neighborhood is home for a large number of migrants of European, Middle Eastern, African and Asian descent. The walk aimed at showing how a vibrant neighborhood can stem from the peaceful coexistence of diverse communities. Christian Gall is a youth media representative from Hungary. We went to a store that uh, actually it's owned by the Muslim and the Israeli who were 20 years ago were fighting against each other in the same war. And right now they are as friends and having the same store. They have very diverse background. They are very diverse in terms of religion. They are very diverse in terms of uh, ethnicities, but they are living together. They are the real example of the peace and the harmony. The following day, the youth met at the forum site to discuss and draft a set of recommendations to world leaders. The discussions followed the official agenda of the forum and included topics such as conflict resolution, education and human rights. The final youth recommendations were presented at the closing ceremony of the forum. I really like the, the statement from the Ban Ki-moon. As he said, we should have to learn from young people. These world leaders, they are ready to listen to the young people. The United Nations has proclaimed the first International Year of Youth on Dialogue and Mutual Understanding, starting in August 2010. Some of these young leaders will meet again in Baku this fall for the first meeting of the global youth movement. Through dialogue, they'll continue to work towards finding common solutions to some of the most pressing issues of their generation. Tal Harris is an activist from Israel. Well, the, the learning process to me was, uh, was great. Um, it's very easy to lose your faith in uh, human beings and in humanity when you're uh, living in a conflict um, like I am. These past couple of days allowed me to reiterate that faith within myself. This report was produced by Camilo Freire for the United Nations.